What's up YouTube? Today's video is actually going to be about breeding bearded dragons and in particular what to look for in female bearded dragons after you've already bred them. So I'm going to show you four different female bearded dragons that I have. One of them has already laid. Another one is, is her first time laying. Another one's a proven breeder and the other one is actually going to be her second time laying this season. So she's already laid a clutch this season. So as I talk about these females, I actually want to show you uh, different things that, to look for in each step of the way whenever you breed your female bearded dragons what to look for initially what to look for after a couple weeks and what to look for after she has she has laid her clutch so let's get rolling so this girl here this is actually her first season breeding she is actually going to be two in august so she's about 19 months so this is a great time for her to actually start breeding usually you want to start breeding around 18 to 24 months obviously it also depends on the weight of the bearded dragon so this girl here, again, she's about 19 months. She actually started pairing with a Hypotrans Leatherback Dunner Het Wiblets about the beginning of January. So usually they don't lock right away. Obviously, you may have a male that's eager and he'll lock right away. But for the most part, they have to get to know each other, see each other, feel each other. And usually the female has to test her dominance and the male has to test his dominance. And then that's how the, the whole courting uh, process works. So it took her a while to actually get gravid. So I started pairing her in January, at the beginning of January, and I did that for about a month until I noticed that she was actually taken to the pairing. So at the beginning of February, I actually stopped pairing her, and ever since she has been developing eggs. So this girl here, she is gravid. I've noticed her eggs. She is definitely gravid. There's no, no doubt about it. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram or anything like that or Facebook, I have posted pictures of her belly and how you can see the blumps and stuff like that but I'll also show you right now i don't know how well you can see that but she is very lumpy you can kind of see it better on the sides you can see it very well she has also gained a whole lot of weight she's ate a whole lot uh she doesn't miss a meal uh but yeah you can see that her belly kind of droops down just a little bit uh normally whenever a bearded dragon is not gravid her belly would just be normal is going to be flat like 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 regular uh there's not going to be much of a droop to it i also show you let me show you a female that's not gravid so you can see the difference between the belly so just look at the belly right now and you'll see the difference between the bellies of a non-gravid female and a gravid female so this female here is actually not gravid you can see there's no droop in the belly so there's no droop she's also not very wide whenever they get gravid they turn into balloons practically they get swollen towards the sides and they their belly drags everywhere they walk so so this girl here she is peach she is actually not peachy she's not aggressive or anything like that she just doesn't like being handled when she's gravid she is a proven breeder this is actually going to be her second year breeding so just to show you she is very wide sideways and she is not super gravid but she is come on peach see this is what i mean she doesn't like being handled so she's very wide sideways but because she is not super gravid there's not really a droop just like any other female that is gravid or pregnant all of their organs practically push up to the top and then the, the eggs practically as they take a shape they start taking up all this area so that's why you can see the belly drooping because everything's getting heavier uh so yes this is peach she doesn't like really being handled whenever she is gravid so this is what she does. She doesn't like being handled. She will continue to run away until I put her back in her enclosure. And then we have this girl. She is Aphrodite. She has already she's already laid her first clutch for the season. She is actually starting to droop a little bit. That means she will be ready to lay again. On average, they will lay about three clutches per season. Uh, sometimes it also depends on how much sperm they get from the male. But on average, they lay about three clutches per season. I have seen females lay up to six clutches, nine clutches, and then I've seen females lay only one clutch. It really just depends on the sperm from the male. So she's going on her second clutch this year. She's already developing eggs. She's already drooping a little bit. So I expect that within the next two or three weeks, she will lay her clutch. So again, wide, a little bit of droop. Those are just things you got to look for. So now I'm going to show you a female that just recently laid and you can see the change that their body goes through after they lay. So this is Iris. Iris laid about a, two weeks ago 
And when she laid, she actually, this is the one that took about two to three weeks to lay her first clutch. So she is way behind as far as schedule goes, mainly because of how long it took her to lay her first clutch. I don't know if she's going to go and get grab it again and lay a second clutch. If she does, I'll just have to be prepared for another long laying process. So, yeah, this is Iris again. She is a little bit skinny still. She has been eating just fine. She did lose a lot of weight because of how long she was trying to lay her eggs for. So usually the process is once they get gravid, they will eat normally for about two to three weeks. And then the last week or two is when they're starting to lay their eggs. With her, she was gravid for about a week. And then she started looking for a place to lay her eggs, which is a little unusual. It took her, like I said, three to two weeks for her to lay her clutch of eggs, which is a little bit longer. So that means she went... She went about a week or two without eating because she was trying to figure out a place to lay her eggs, which again, is not typical. It's a little un unusual, but this is just the way she did it. If the second time around she does that again, obviously she's probably not going to be a good breeder, mainly because she, she might lay great clutches. She might do great as far as laying her eggs and developing eggs, but as far as the laying process, it really puts stress on her. So if this happens again, Obviously, she's still learning, so I would say probably not this time, but the next time. So, I'd give her two more chances, obviously. I'm not going to just rule her out just after the one time. I'll give her two more chances just to see how she does this season. And if she continues to struggle with the laying process, I will just call, cut her off from breeding. Um, obviously, that sounds a little cruel, but it's actually better for her because I'm worried about her health. I don't want her to struggle with the laying process and then eventually pass away because she is not eating as she's supposed to she's not gaining weight and then she's obviously losing weight every time she lays her eggs so that's another thing you need to look for but again she's eating fine now i just have to get her back up to weight before she lays a second clutch if she does lay a second clutch so this is iris she's doing great so i did say i was only going to show four females and then i ended up showing one that wasn't grabbing now i'm showing this female here so this female here, I actually started pairing her in January. She was with that male probably six times after that. And at this point, it appears that she is gravid. So about two to three months later, she has developed eggs. Really, another thing is female, uh, female bearded dragons use their eggs as fat storage and calcium storage and all that. So if they are getting too much of one thing, like fat or calcium or protein or anything like that, they will actually put it into their eggs, and then that's when they lay those infertile clutches. So I'm not sure if she's actually going to lay because it's still too soon for me to tell. She has started getting very aggressive towards her uh, tank mate, so I will have to separate them because her tank mate is not uh, gravid, and she might be gravid. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, I do cohab my female bearded dragons. The only time I stop them from cohabbing altogether is when I notice that the females are getting aggressive towards each other. Or when it's breeding season. Now, obviously, I started breeding her, but I didn't know if it took. So now I know that she is getting aggressive. So it's kind of giving me an idea that she might have taken into the pairing. So I will separate her into her own tank. This female here, she was with her tank mate for probably another month after they woke up. So she was fine with her tank mate. It's the fact that she's gravid now that she's not fine with her tank mate. And actually, Peach and Aphrodite, they were actually tank mates as well. But because they started getting aggressive towards each other, because they were gravid, I had to separate them. So that's practically this whole video. Hopefully you got something from it. Hopefully it made sense to you. I know if you've never bred before or if this is your first time breeding, you're probably like, what is this guy talking about? I don't see any lumps. It might be too early to tell. For example, this female here, she has lumps. You just can't see them uh, unless you lift her like this. And I know this looks like it's like the worst thing ever, but if you lift her like this, you can see the lumps. Here, let me see if y'all can see it like that. Uh, hopefully the phone focuses. Now, this is not going to hurt your bearded dragon to be lifted like this. Obviously, I have my hand under her, so she is holding on to something. But you can see that there is lumps right here in this area and over here in this area as well. So that is the lumps that I'm talking about. The bigger they get, the, most vis the more visible they are. Hopefully, I gave you enough information for you to go along with the female on her breeding process with her laying process and all that so you can visually see all the changes that a female goes through with breeding i mean that's 
that's something that you need to learn if you want to breed your bitter dragons or if you've already bred your bitter dragons and now you're just in the process of waiting for her to get gravid. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. Peace. Come on, Sarah. What are you doing? And that's what happens.